In this video, I want to introduce you to a general method or recipe that you can use to apply Newton's laws to just about any problem involving forces and accelerations. Then I'm going to show you some examples so that you can get a feel for how Newton's second law is applied in various contexts. So let's get started. Here's my recipe for solving Newton's laws problems. The first step is to identify the forces that are present and determine which objects they act on. Most of the time you'll be given or you will make some sort of diagram showing these forces. The next step is to use F net equals MA, and this involves looking at your diagram and replacing F net in the equation with the forces you have drawn. Step three is to do some algebra and arrive at an answer. If you follow the method, you'll be able to solve a lot of physics problems. Also, if you understand this approach, you'll have an easier time following solved examples that you might see in a textbook or a lecture or in some other context, because all of these examples will follow some version of this approach. So let's look at some examples. Let's say that a plate is sitting on a table and there are two forces acting on it in opposite directions. If the mass of the plate is 0.50 kilograms, what is the acceleration of the plate? In this example, the first step has been done. You'll see lots of examples in upcoming videos in which the diagram needs to be generated. But in this video, I'm just going to give the diagram so that I can focus on showing how the F net equals MA part works. The next two steps are to apply Newton's second law and to solve. To use F net equals MA, you should look at the force diagram, read off the forces acting on the object, and replace F net in the equation with those forces. Let's call this the Y direction, and I'll designate the direction toward the top of the screen as positive. In that case, F net is 5.0 J hat minus 3.0 J hat, and of course the mass of the plate is 0.50 kilograms. Simplifying the left-hand side and dividing by m, the acceleration of the plate is 4.0 meters per second squared j hat, or 4.0 meters per second squared toward the top of the screen. You might be thinking that including the j hats in that calculation was kind of unnecessary, and I agree. Anytime the forces are all along a line, as they are in this example, you can just drop the i hat, j hat, k hat notation. You do need to take the direction of the vectors into account by including the proper signs, as I have done here, but as long as you do that, you can drop the rest of the vector notation. Here's a second example, and this time the plate has four forces acting on it, two in the x direction and two in the y direction. Let's find the acceleration of the plate. Let me start by drawing some axes so that we can get positive and negative directions squared away. Once again, the forces are already drawn, so step one is done, and we can go right on to steps two and three, which are to apply Newton's second law and to solve. For step two, I need to look at the diagram and replace the F net part of F net equals MA with the forces that are shown on the diagram. The forces in the X direction are negative 3.0 I hat and negative 1.0 I hat, and the forces in the Y direction are positive 5.0 J hat and negative 3.0 J hat. I'll set these equal to 0.50a, and then I'll collect terms and simplify. The acceleration for the plate turns out to be a is equal to negative 8.0 meters per second squared i hat plus 4.0 meters per second squared j hat. This acceleration is given in component form. If I want to draw that acceleration, the components would look like this, so the overall acceleration would look like this. The length or magnitude of the acceleration vector may be determined by using the Pythagorean theorem, so the magnitude is 8.9 meters per second squared. And the direction may be determined by using inverse tan of opposite over adjacent, so this angle is 27 degrees. Looking back at the calculation, you can see that ax and ay are here, and f net x and f net y are here. You may have noticed that as I worked through the calculation that the horizontal terms and the vertical terms didn't ever commingle. The i-hats naturally kept the horizontal stuff together, and the j-hats naturally kept the vertical stuff together. Another way of saying this is to say that the x and y directions are independent from each other. Because of this independence, most of the time you will see force problems separated out into a horizontal calculation and a vertical calculation, like this. Let me just show you how the rest of the calculation looks with this approach. The horizontal equation turns into minus 3.0 minus 1.0 equals 0.5 ax. And the vertical equation turns into 5.0 minus 3.0 equals 0.50 ay. Notice that the resulting accelerations are just exactly the same as the results above. This second approach of setting up two equations tends to keep calculations simpler and be somewhat more intuitive, so that's what you will see most of the time. Let me show you one more example with that approach, and this one is going to take the level of difficulty up a notch. 
Let's imagine that the plate is now being acted on by two forces, a force that's 5.0 newtons straight up and another force with an unknown magnitude that's pointed at 60 degrees below the negative x-axis. So the components of that force are going to look like this. Let's imagine further that under the influence of these two forces, the plate accelerates to the left along the negative x-axis. What is the magnitude of the unknown force and what's the magnitude of the acceleration of the plate? The diagram is drawn, so let's go right to steps two and three. This time I'm going to jump right into writing down two equations for Newton's second law, one in the x direction and one in the y direction. Before I can use those, I will need the components of f. Cosine 60 is equal to fx over f, and sine 60 is equal to fy over f. So the magnitude of fx is f cosine 60, and the magnitude of fy is f sine 60. And f written in component form is negative f cosine 60 i minus f sine 60 j. The negative signs arise because these components are in the negative x and negative y directions. Turning back to Newton's second law, in the x direction, the only force is the x component of f. So negative f cosine 60 is equal to 0 0.50 ax. In the y direction, f net is 5.0 minus f sine 60, and that's equal to 0 0.50 ay. At first, it seems like there are too many variables to solve these equations, but remember that the acceleration is entirely along the x-axis, so ay is equal to 0. Once that substitution is made, it's possible to solve for f, which is equal to 5.8 newtons. And once f is known, it may be substituted back into the x equation. So negative 5.8 cosine 60 is equal to 0 0.50 a sub x. Cosine 60 is 0 0.50, so a sub x turns out to be negative 5.8 meters per second squared. As you watch the upcoming videos and try some problems, keep looking for this general approach to solving Newton's laws problems, because it's always the same. Draw a diagram to determine the forces at play. Use the diagram to write down an equation or maybe two for each object using f net equals ma, and then solve. In this video, I have mostly focused on the second and the third steps in this recipe because I wanted you to have a good sense of how to approach working with the second law. In the next couple of videos, you'll see some examples where the diagrams have to be generated, so you'll get a better sense of how to approach step one.